Hi guys, in this video we're going to discuss the magnetic field caused by a current carrying wire. We'll look at the right hand rule, the properties of the magnetic field around a wire, solenoids, and then we'll finish with a summary. Some of the ways in which we can create magnetic fields are actually quite surprising and they're not going to look like the familiar examples of bar magnets or fridge magnets that we're used to. In particular, it turns out that a current passing through a wire will produce a magnetic field. So in this picture, if this black line pointing upwards is our wire, and this green arrow shows us that there is a current moving upwards, then these blue lines which are going around the wire are the magnetic field lines. So the magnetic field points around the wire, and in particular, the field lines are what we call concentric circles around the wire. Concentric circles are circles which share the same centre, but that have different radiuses to each other. So how can we find out that the magnetic field looks like this, these circles going around the wire? Well, we can see that the magnetic field lines are circles by using a compass. Now, compasses uh, were typically or originally used for navigation. They use the fact that the Earth has a magnetic field to tell us at any point which way is north. But for the purpose of this experiment, all we need to know is that the needle of a compass is a bar magnet. This bar magnet is free to rotate about the middle part here. And this means that the needle will be free to line up with the magnetic field. So because the needle of the compass will line up with the magnetic field, by tracing the compass around the wire, we can see the direction of the magnetic field at each point. And so by putting the compass in different places, around the wire, we can draw what the field will look like at each point, and we can learn that the magnetic field goes round in a circle around the wire. At this point, we might think that we know enough to be able to get a blank piece of paper and without looking, try and draw the magnetic field around a wire, but we would realise that there's something we've forgotten, which is which way round does this magnetic field go? we can remember which way round the magnetic field points by using the right-hand rule. Remember first that this arrow here represents the current and the lines here are the magnetic field lines. We remember which way round these field lines point in the following way. With your right hand, form a fist with your thumb pointing outwards. And it is very important here that we use our right hand. So here we have our right hand in a fist. Then if we take our thumb and we point it in the direction of the current. So for example, in this picture, we are pointing our thumb upwards because if we go back to the original image, the current was pointing upwards. Next, we take a look at our remaining fingers the field lines will follow the directions that our fingers point. So let's take a quick look here at the fingers and check that they point in the same way as the field. And indeed they do. So we can always use our right hand to determine the direction of the magnetic field. So let's think more about the properties of this magnetic field going around a current carrying wire now. And let's remember one fact, which is that any magnetic field is stronger in places where the magnetic field lines are closer together. And in our video about magnetic fields, we saw this in a couple of examples, notably for the magnetic field of a bar magnet. We learnt that near the poles, the magnetic field lines are close together. And this means that the magnetic field itself is actually stronger. Further away from the poles, the separation between the magnetic field lines is larger and this represents that further away from the magnet, the magnetic field is weaker. Let's have a go at applying our knowledge in the case of the current carrying wire. In this case, it turns out that a larger current through the wire produces a stronger magnetic field. 
So on the left, we're looking at the example where we have a smaller current. And on the right hand side, we're looking at an example where the wire has a larger current. And take a look at the separations of the field lines in these two cases. On the left hand side, the field lines are further apart from each other than in the diagram on the right hand side. This means that the magnetic field produced by the wire with the larger current has a stronger magnetic field. So we know how the strength of the magnetic field varies with the current now. But how does the strength of the magnetic field vary with our distance from the wire? Well, it turns out that at further distances from the wire, the magnetic field gets weaker. And again, we can see this in our picture where close to the wire, the field lines are close together and further away, the field lines are further apart. So therefore, the magnetic field near the wire is stronger. And the magnetic field further away from the wire is weaker. And this makes sense because the further away we are from the wire, the less of an effect we think it should have on any magnets that we're carrying or anything. We now know what the magnetic field of a straight current carrying wire is. But let's imagine wrapping that wire into a loop. So here is our loop of wire which is carrying a current. And let's draw on which way round the current is going round this loop. Now it turns out that if you take your right hand and use the right hand rule by pointing your thumb along the current at each point along the loop, then each part of the loop creates a magnetic field that points in this direction, in the middle. In other words, it turns out that the field lines from each bit of the loop add up in the middle. And as a result of this, the magnetic field in the middle of the loop is very strong. But what if we wanted to make this field even stronger? Well, we could put another loop right next to our current one. If we add another loop of current next to the one that we already have, where I've drawn on the arrows to show the direction of the current again, then we would have an even stronger magnetic field pointing in this direction in the center. But why stop at adding just one more loop? Instead, we make a solenoid. A solenoid is a wire which is looped around many times to make a coil. So here is our coil of wire. And when we put a current through this coil of wire, what we have is a load of loops of current which are all next to each other. And of course then the great thing about these loops is that the magnetic fields of the loops all add together in the middle. We call a solenoid an electromagnet. So what is an electromagnet? Well, an electromagnet is a magnet which can be switched on and off by an electrical current. So here we've got a picture where we imagine that we have our solenoid in a circuit. On the left here, we have the circuit symbol for two cells. And we can see from the terminals that the current is going to flow in this direction, or at least it would if there wasn't a switch in the circuit. Currently the switch is off, so no current is flowing around the circuit and the solenoid is just a boring old coil of wire. But if we flick the switch on, the current flows. Current flows through the solenoid and that turns the solenoid into a magnet. It turns it into a magnet because we've just seen that it's the current going through the coil of wire that makes a magnetic field. And if something creates a magnetic field, we call it a magnet. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE physics and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Provide smiley face and together, let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.